Welcome back to Old Red's coverage of Nebraska playoff high school football. This is Class C2 football, and it's featuring number five, Malcolm, who are 9-1 and one on the season, and number four, Fillmore Central, who are 10-0. and oh. well, The winner of this game will play next Friday, November 10th, either wherever their home stadium are, uh, is if number eight, Kearney Catholic, wins, or in Norfolk, as number one Norfolk Catholic currently beating number eight Kearney Catholic. Last time we checked, it was in the third, and Norfolk Catholic was up 25-6. So the winner of this game will go play the winner of that game. Right now it's looking like it's going to be Norfolk Catholic, the one seed in the bracket. But enough out of that. This game isn't over yet, Ron. We've still got 24 minutes to play, two quarters to go, 14-7 to in favor of Malcolm leading it over Fillmore Central. And... This is going to be a big play here because Malcolm gets the football to begin the second half, Ron. Fillmore Central has got to really focus and leave it all on the line with their defense here to try to get that punt or takeaway. Yeah, their defense has, uh, their defense has played so well this year. You know, this is kind of, this should be their, uh, should be a good thing for them uh, being able to go out there first get a big stop to start the the second half and give their offense the ball in some pretty good field position well let's see who's going to come away with a quarterfinal win in advance of the semifinals time will tell who will end up winning this one fillmore central boots it off to begin the third quarter it's caught here by mccareer at the 15 he comes all the way from the near side to the far side across the 20 and he comes back over to the 25 He's downed. There's a flag on the far sideline. Is this going to be holding on Malcolm again? That would be shocking because that would mean on their last three kickoff slash punt returns, they've held on all of them. Yeah, it's it's and really... I think it is going to be holding. Yeah, and it's really backed them up uh, pretty much each time inside their own 20, I believe, or close to the 20-yard line. So Yeah, because, well, because after yeah. Fillmore Central scored... Got that kickoff return, brought it out to the 39. They held, brought him back. Then they, Fillmore Central punted. They caught that, brought it all the way to the 49. They held. That one came back. And then now they bring this kickoff back across the 25, and now they have to start at the 15 because of the holding penalty. So Malcolm, these penalties just hurting them severely here. Two receivers to the left, one to the right here for Maddox Meyer. Hands it off on the first play. And nowhere to go for Dalton Amen. He gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on the play of three yards. Second down and 13 here. And right on cue, here comes the Fillmore defense coming up with a big play to, to start this first half off the way they want to. And now they've got Malcolm in second and long. Let's see what's uh, going to happen here. Well, you know at these second and long plays, and even third and long plays, they can prove to be costly for Malcolm. Interception thrown on a third and long earlier on in the game, brought back by Tweedy all the way to the three. So they got to be careful and make smart passes here. Three receivers to the right of Meyer. This might be a screen pass at the far side. It isn't. He'll look over the middle and loft it over the middle of the field. It's caught across the 40 and dragged down across midfield. He's still on his feet. There goes Logan McGreer inside the 40. A's all the way, dragged down at the 29. Logan McGreer with an enormous catch. Stayed on his feet, broke a tackle at the 29-yard line. Malcolm, first down and 10. Well, it was about time they got the passing game going. This team thrived on the passing game this year. They finally get a massive chunk play, about 40 yards or so. Yeah, absolutely, but a big missed tackle right around midfield there for Fillmore Central. Gave him about a, about another 20 or so yards of extra of extra play there. And we're only, a, we're only one minute, 15 seconds into this third quarter. Two plays in, they're already inside the 30. Here's a handoff up the middle for Brixenmeyer. He gets about three yards. He gets down to about the 26. It's second and seven. Tonight's game brought to you by Members Own Credit Union in Beatrice and Lincoln. And if you need financing for heavy machinery, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, RVs, ATVs, or other expensive items, visit GoCurrency.com for details. So second down and seven from the 26. Malcolm already leads by seven. Nearly two minutes into this third quarter, but this could be the biggest second half of the season for Fillmore Central to keep their unbeaten 10-0 season alive. Two receivers to the left, one to the right of Maddox Meyer. He's got Dalton Amen in the backfield, and he hands it off to Amen, who cuts to the right side of the offensive line, and a nice tackle on the play. No gain 
on the play. And it looks like on the tackle right there was Luke Kimbrough who got in there and made the tackle. No gain. Third down and seven. Tonight's game also brought to you by Cumberland Fashions in Geneva, Crete Area Medical Center, Wilbur and Friend Medical Clinics, and Smith Auto in Pawnee City. Learn more at smithautone.com. Well, this might be the biggest play of the game defensively for Fillmore Central leading up to this moment so far. Third down and seven at the 26. And Malcolm not really in field goal range quite yet. Looks like Matt Meyer is under center here. And he play actions this one. He rolls to his left, throws it out. It's caught by Malcolm. He's inside the 10 and dragged down at about the 8-yard line. Carson Frank makes a big play here for Malcolm. They're inside the 10. And this could be the just a marquee score right here if they can get it in for 6. Yeah, it looked like the defender had pretty good coverage, but when he tried to swipe the ball, yep. uh, he just completely missed it, yep. went into the receiver's hands, made the catch, and, and that's got a few extra yards as well. Well, that's the risk you take when you try to swipe down the ball or pick it off. If you don't do it, the receiver's ahead of you and can break your tackle and go farther down, and that's what happened. Man in motion is Carson Frank. Goes from the near side to the far side. Here's the pass across the middle. It's incomplete. Logan McGreer couldn't make the catch from Meyer. Meyer, that was one-on-one -on -one coverage on the near sideline. He was immediately looking that way on that crossing route. And actually, it's funny, it hit the numbers of McGreer and went off his chest. So if he makes that, like that, that could have been a catch right there for McGreer. It's a nice, well-thrown ball. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and, and that's another thing you can't have as a receiver is drops. Those are obviously magnified uh, in playoff games. So... I think that might be only the first drop of the night yeah. for Fillmore. Yeah, yeah McGreer's uh, had Malcolm a great though, game. So. Yeah, yep. he's had a phenomenal game. Had that big catch on the earlier on in the drive. Second and goal from the seven. Man in motion again. They hand it off. Dalton Amen going to the right side of the offensive line and has nowhere to go. He's brought down by Carson Ashey. There's also a few other guys who got in there on that tackle, but pretty much the entire defensive line of Fillmore Central. The Fillmore Central's done a good job of shutting down Car uh, Dalton Amen after he had a really good start to the game. Now it's third and goal from the six, and you've got to think, not only is this four down territory for Malcolm, but if they don't get six here, if they have to settle for three, it would, it would hurt them a lot. I mean, it would still bring them up by two scores, but it would also hurt not getting six. That's true, and, you know, like I said, I think Fillmore Central's finally getting it figured out a little bit defensively, especially in the running game right now. The last three times, all three times they've run the ball here in the second half, they haven't gotten a whole lot. So it's like... We'll see. They're lined up in the jumbo set. It's a design quarterback run. No, he's going to pass. It's deflected at the line of scrimmage by Trevor Roach. And it's incomplete. Fourth down. So it looked like a design run here by Meyer, but then he kind of stopped on a on a dot and tried to throw that one at the end zone. Nice deflection by Roach. And you know what's crazy, Ron? He deflected that one up in the air, and he almost picked that one, too. He had a chance of intercepting that one. Yeah, that would have been the fourth turnover of the yeah. game going against uh, uh, Malcolm. That would have uh, hurt. Yeah, that would have definitely hurt, especially in the red zone. Well, they're going to go for this, it seems, on fourth down and goal from the six. You knew there was a chance they could go for this one on fourth down and goal. Fillmore Central bench going crazy, trying to say something to their defense here. They're going to snap it. Meyer to pass, going to the end zone. It's caught, and a touchdown by Logan McGreer. Wide receiver one. Does a little celebration. Kicked out his leg a little bit, like a Michael Jackson-esque move. Uh, he can celebrate like Michael Jackson right now. He just scored another touchdown for his team. It's 20-7, to Malcolm. Yeah, that's a big score, obviously, for Malcolm. And, you know, just a simple pass play. He found the open man. Got the six points. Another crossing route by McGreer. This time came from the far side to the near side. And he found him right in the back of the end zone. He had beaten his man. Now they're going to go for two. That's what they've been doing all game. They're one for two on two-point conversions, Malcolm, tonight. What will they do here? Maddox Myers lined up with Brixen Meyer, who goes out in motion. Meyer rolling to his right, trying to get to the end zone, and he comes down just a yard short of the end zone. So the two-point content... Uh, attempt, no good. 20-7, to seven, Malcolm leads it off of a touchdown pass of six yards from Maddox Meyer, delivering it to Logan McGreer. Senior to the junior connection, Malcolm extends their lead, 7.39 to play in the third. We'll be right back on Old Red. Tonight's high school football playoff game on Old Red 99.5 is brought to you by Geneva Home Center. 
Weaver Repair in Geneva, Cornerstone Bank, member FDIC, Weaver Pharmacy in downtown Geneva, and Geneva Milling Company. Well, one side of this of these bleachers is happy and excited. Malcolm fans over to our right have been clapping the entire game, it seems. Fillmore Central fans taking up the, about 75% of these bleachers. They're, they're not feeling too well right now. They're down 13 points right now, and that's a big scoreline based on how this Malcolm off defense has been playing. This one's caught by Fillmore Central at the 25, and it's brought across the 30. He's downed at about the 33. So what a great drive by Malcolm. They had a third and long situation, and they threw it and completed the pass to Logan McGreer, who ended up getting nearly 50 yards on that passing play. Completely changed the kind of the momentum of that drive and allowed Malcolm to go down and score. Yeah, Malcolm's done a really good job of not allowing those penalties like right before their drive starting, uh, the drive started. They, they did a very good job not letting that hamper them on their way to getting that touchdown drive going. Stassen is on a QB sneak on first down and 10. He gets to about the thir- uh, 35, which is a pickup of two, and a second down and eight. Well, that was weird. I mean, it's not my team, but a QB sneak on the first play of the drive. Like, have you, yeah. I'm not saying that's weird because it's bad. I'm saying it's weird because you ever see that happen. Yeah, it's, normally that's a third and short, fourth and short yeah. type of play, but, uh, you know. The Eagles know that too well. Yeah, absolutely. With the, <laughs> with the brotherly tush push. The brotherly shove, as they yeah, call yeah, it. The yeah, the brotherly so. shove, the tush push, whatever you like to call it. They flip this one out to Roach on the left side. Can he get something? He gets a little bit more. He's down the 45 to the 50, and he's inside of Malcolm territory to the 45-yard line. Nice run by Trevor Roach. That's a big pickup on that play of nearing, nearly 20 yards, and that's first down and 10. So there you go. My my trend that I noticed at the beginning of the game where they – if they get a bad run on first down, they, they end up punting it away. Trevor Roach just says, enough of that. Let me do the rest. Yeah, they, they just need to continue to get these big chunk plays on the ground, and they're going to continue to gash this defense that There's way. There's Roach again on the near sideline, and this time he gets not much. He's pushed out on the play by two Clippers, Brixen Meyer and Noah Gagne. And it's really a short gain of about one. It'll be second and nine. All right, tonight's game brought to you by Cumberland Fashions in Geneva, Creed Area Medical Center, Wilbur and Friend Medical Clinics, Smith Auto in Pawnee City. Learn more at smithautone.com. And Friend Fertilizer, your Ranky dealer in Friend. Second and nine, Stassen is under center. Luke Kimbrough is the first one to receive it. He makes a couple men miss and gets inside the 40. He's down to the 37. There were two backs on that play. Kimbrough was lined up before Roach, and Kimbrough got it. It'll be third down and three here for Fillmore Central. Currently at the 37. They need to get down to the 34 here, Ron. This is a big play. you got to think, is this four-down territory for the Panthers? I'd say yes. Yeah, definitely too long for a field goal, uh, especially if they come up short of the first down here. So this is definitely two plays here to get three, three yards. Well, the road team trying to continue that momentum here. Can the home team do something? Sassinus. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his left. He's looking to throw, but is he going to decide to run it on the far sideline? He will. He gets inside the 35 to the 33, and that is enough for a first down. The fans were losing their minds on that play. Just, I think they were trying to get Sassanis to throw it, but he didn't have anybody open downfield, so he decided to run it, which was a smart play. They get the first down. But I don't know. That seemed like it was intended to be a run or intended to make Malcolm think it was a run, then they play action and throw it deep. It seemed like that was the play. Yeah, something, was, uh, something wasn't uh, yeah. natural about that, we'll yeah. say. So. <laughs> well, first down and 10 either way. Fillmore Central picks it up. Stassinus. Luke Kimbrough gets the carry. Gets down to the 30. That's where he's met by the Clippers' D-line. Two, two yards on the gain. Second down and eight. This might actually be the biggest drive of the game so far for Fillmore Central. You're down by two scores, 13-point deficit. A little more than midway through the third quarter, and you need a touchdown more than ever to get yourself back to a one-score game. Yeah, I think it's definitely imperative they get a touchdown on the board, make this a one-score game again, and put the pressure back on Malcolm. Once again, going under center, two backs here for Fillmore Central, looking like a run play here. They flip it out to Roach to the right sideline. He goes, he comes to the near sideline, cuts across the 30. He's banged up, 
at about the 26 or 7 yard line. Either way, it's going to be third and medium here. And this, I don't know, they went with a play action, tried to pass it. Instead, Stassinus ran with it on last third down. That was a third and three. Now we got a third and five. What do they go for here, Ron? If you were the coach in this situation, what, what play would you go for? Well, I think uh, we're still in that four-down territory again. Uh, field goal still keeps it at a two-possession game, so I think this is definitely a touchdown or bust situation, even though we are only in the third quarter. wanted to mention that Trevor Roach is on the sideline. He subbed out of the game, their number one running back. Here's Stassinus rolling to his left, trying to find a place to go, and he does find some space. He's inside the 20. Stassinus breaking tackles inside the 10. He's inside the 5. Trevin Stassinus, the senior, oh gets in goodness. for the touchdown. What a wow. touchdown run. Looks like he was going to pick up 5 yards. He ends up getting 15 after contact. Stassinus doesn't want to let his season end tonight. 20-13. to 13. Malcolm in the lead, but Fillmore Central responds back they bite back 405 to play in the third run i mean this is playoff football at its finest putting your whole body on the line for the win yeah you don't typically see quarterbacks being able to drag a defender for about (laughs) 10 yards oh high snap they look like they're going to fake this one stassen is rolling to his right dumping it off he's trying to get in for two and it looks like he did get in for two dylan gawecki who's the kicker runs and catches the ball at the seven, got in for the two-point conversion, 20 to 15. And this is looking like it's going to come down to the wire, Ron. I mean, this is exactly what we expected in this game. Fillmore Central responds. Their senior quarterback giving himself up for the for the play, but he gets in after 15 yards after contact, and they get in for two. 20 to 15, Malcolm leading it over Fillmore Central with 4:05 to play in the third. I'll be right back. Tonight's game brought to you by Glenda and Jonna Austin, your shelter insurance agents in Fairbury, Prairie View Industries, North Highway 15 in Fairbury, and Tim Hartley with Hebron Tree Service. Well, I haven't seen a crowd shift in momentum so much than when the Denver Broncos beat the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> last weekend. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was unbelievable. I, I cannot believe they didn't give up a single point in that second half. Yeah. That was unreal. Oh, I had to say that for you, Ron. Ron's a Denver Broncos <laughs> fan. Fillmore Central boots this one away and is taken at the four-yard line by Logan McGreer. He brings it across the 15 on the far sideline, across the 20, and he'll eventually make it to the 25-yard line where he's going to get brought down. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, Ron, and everybody listening at home. That is the first kickoff return slash punt return in three, uh, three times that they haven't got a holding penalty. Yeah, it's, that's that's a good thing, obviously, for them. So I think they're... It took them a little bit, but they figured it out. Yeah, don't don't hold. Whatever yep. you do, don't hold on the kickoff return. doesn't so. matter how many yards we get. Just do not hold. Yeah. Just block. And they did that right there. And they get the ball to 25, which is not bad field position at all. Solid 21-yard return on the kickoff there for McGreer. Well, McGreer... Junior wide receiver going to need a big, big third quarter and fourth quarter here. He already has a big 50-yard passing or receiving play. First down and 10 for Malcolm. It's a screen pass to the near sideline for Cole Tiedemann. He's getting up the near sideline, and he's going to get dragged down at about the 27. Fillmore Central fans saw something. They saw a hold, they claim. There's no flag on the play, and it's a pickup of two yards. Actually, that's only a yard on the play. Second and nine. Yeah, I don't blame them for thinking they saw a hold. It seems like Malcolm's been holding quite a bit tonight. Yeah. Uh, if it's not, a, it, we've seen some holds uh, on when they were on offense yeah. as well. Don't forget about that. Yeah, so. even if it's not a hold, <laughs> if you if you hear it from the crowd, the refs will probably be second guessing themselves, like, "Hey, well, 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 was there a hold? Was there a hold? I don't know." <laughs> but second down and nine here at the twenty-six. They flip it out to Logan McGreer, a jet sweep to the far sideline. McGreer breaks a couple tackles. He's down at the 29, so it's a pickup of two yards. It's going to be third and seven here for Malcolm. Now they've gotten, they've, they've definitely gotten the passing game going a little bit, but by little bit I mean it was the long ball that converted. They haven't really been able to get anything on the short route except for that touchdown. Yeah, really not a whole lot going on in the short passing game for them, but uh, it is third and six. Let's see if they go back to that short passing game, see if they can't miss a tackle or two and get this first down. Well, 3.15 to play in the third. Third down and seven. Fake the handoff. Meyer to pass. Rolling to his right. 
Rifles one down the sideline is picked off. Intercepted. Oh. Cade Cooper gets one on the stat column for himself. And Fillmore Central has the ball at the 44 of Malcolm. What a big, big, big turnover. Once again, three interceptions thrown in this game by Maddox Meyer. I mean, yep. this Fillmore Central defense is something to behold tonight. Yes, they, they you know, they've been they've been the they've been the team that's uh, you know, they've done this kind of thing all year to teams. They've just frustrated them time and time and time again. And uh, even though it didn't start out very well for them in that first half, they've really picked it up very much a lot on this defensive end. Absolutely. And they have a chance if they get a touchdown to take the lead. Haven't had the lead tonight. Malcolm's biggest lead was 14. Stasinus, play action, rolling to his right. Is he going to throw a run? He dumps it off, and it's caught by Jaron Tweedy. He's inside the 30 on the near sideline, and he gets knocked out of bounds at around the 26. So big pickup, about 15 yards there. First and 10, Fillmore Central. They're finally getting the passing game to go a little bit here. Yeah, you know, and I like the way that they open that up with a pass, you know, try to break tendency a little bit with that running game, try the pass, see what happens, and, you know, big play there to start this drive. Well, if this game has any indication of how how meaningful it is for these two teams, Malcolm lost in the quarterfinals last year. They want to make it to the semis. Fillmore Central is in their first undefeated season since the 90s. Here's Luke Kimbrough on the handoff. Power is into the D-line and gets about three yards, so it'll be second and seven. Tonight's game is brought to you by Thayer County Health Services and Hebron, Bruning, Davenport, and Deschler, Western United Mutual Insurance, Home Office in Wilbur, and Southeast Valley Irrigation, your Valley dealer in Bruning. Ball at the 23. Both of these teams have not made the semifinals in over 20 years in Class C2. One of these teams has a chance to make it tonight. Sassinus takes a snap. Design quarterback run to the left side. He's got us some space. He's across the 15, and he's dragged down to the 13-yard line. Sassinus picks up about 10 yards. That's enough for a first down. They're in the red zone once again, and with 2.13 to play in the third round, they have a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. Yeah, they certainly do. And, you know, again, that running game, you know, the running game and the play action pass, that's been their that's been their bread and butter all year. We've been talking about it a lot tonight. And now it's finally starting to come together here in the second half. Ball's at the twelve here. So to get a first down and goal, they need to get down to the two. Stasinus with Kimbrough to his right, two receivers to each side. Hands it off. Luke Kimbrough finds a, some space and powers his way down to around the eight-yard line or so. It'll be a second and six coming up here for Fillmore Central. And, okay, for a minute I thought there might have been a downed Panther, but they were just yeah, they were, yeah, they they were, were just laying on top of each other after that blocking play. Yeah, there was a lot of bodies down yep. on that play, so it takes a while to get everybody yeah. off of each other. So, <laughs> Well, you got to think these guys are putting – their entire bodies on the line tonight. I mean, a close game like this in the playoffs, the quarterfinals, you're just three wins away from a state championship. Got to think these guys are putting it all on the line tonight. Stass in the center center with two backs. Here's Trevor Roach on the handoff. Gets to the left side. Trevor Roach is in for the touchdown. Trevor Roach, his first rushing touchdown of the game. And how big is it to come with 105 to play in the third and give Fillmore Central their first lead of the night? 21 20. My goodness, I'll tell you, this this has been a game of momentum shifts, yep. and right now the momentum is clearly with Fillmore Central here as we come down these last minute five seconds here in this third quarter. Well, one of the big things against Wilbur Claytonia last week here in Geneva was that second half offensive surge by the Panthers that allowed them to run away with the game. They take the lead off of an offensive surge here in the second half against Malcolm a week later. They'll go for two. Tweedy comes in motion. Sassinus looking right, rolls to his right, runs it in for two. Trevin Stasinus is having himself a great game, and so is this Fillmore Central team in the second half. 105 to play in the third quarter. Fillmore Central has clawed back from a 13-point second half deficit and has now has a three-point lead, 23-20 over Malcolm. We'll see how the Clippers can respond. This is Old Red High School playoff action. We'll be right back. 
the high school football playoffs on All Red 99.5, brought to you by Miller Sales in Claytonia, Certified Truck and Trailer Repair in Geneva, Hilltop Performance and Fitness in Crete, and Sap Brothers of Philly, Crete, Lincoln, and Hanover, Kansas. Welcome back to the broadcast, everybody. I'm Kyle Mathis. I'm joined by Ron Roskilly. Ron said it beautifully before. This game is all about momentum, and Fillmore Central certainly has the momentum here late in the third. This one's caught by Logan McCreer on the kickoff. He's across the 20. He's across the 30. McCreer breaking tackles and getting down to the 38. Logan McCreer has been one guy on this team. He's on those kickoff and punt returns. He's done such a good job. If they've not been called back for holding, which has been a common occurrence for Malcolm tonight, he's really set them up with some good field position. They're all the way at the 38-yard line here. That's a really good field position to start a drive. Yeah, especially in the high school game as well, and uh, you know, really even at the college and pro levels as well, when you can start the ball that that uh, close to midfield. Oh, this is truly high school playoff atmosphere. Not too bad of a night, a little bit chilly, but not too hot. The sun set, it's under the bright lights. And these players certainly are feeling the pressure of the bright lights right here. Malcolm on first and ten. Fakes the handoff. Here's the run. Quarterback keep on an option play by Maddox Meyer, and he gets nothing. He gets back to the line of scrimmage in his second down and 10. And now we're starting to see Malcolm get a little taste of their own medicine from that first half. Malcolm guarded the run precisely and beautifully in the first half. Well, now Fillmore Central is guarding the run really nicely here in the second half. Yeah, I think uh, I think the run defense, like I said, it's been working a lot better for Fillmore Central since that 14 nothing lead that Malcolm took. You know, I think Malcolm is definitely going to have to throw the ball a little bit more here in the second half, try and let that running game uh, get back to where it's at. Well, they already have three interceptions thrown in this game, Malcolm. This might be the last play of the third quarter here. Play action here for Maddox Meyer. He's going to go down the far sideline. It's up for grabs. It's intercepted for the fourth time by Fillmore Central. And here comes the return. Here it comes from Dylan Gawecki. Excuse me, it's not Dylan Gawecki. He's across the 50, and he gets dragged down at the 42-yard line. Jaron Tweedy gets his second interception of the game. There's a flag all the way back near the line of scrimmage. What's the call here? Is the interception going to stand? We've seen Malcolm take those deep shots in this game, and they have not ended well. And another interception for the moment, unless... This is on Fillmore Central. There are zeros on the clock here in the third quarter. The quarter has ended. Twelve minutes to play in this game in the fourth with Fillmore Central up 23-20. We're still waiting for the call here. And well, we'll just update all of you at home with the call when we come back. You know what? This is going to actually be a, a penalty, as the ref calls it, at the end of the third. This is going to be a penalty on Fillmore Central. Question of the day is, are they going to be able to keep the ball? Yeah, that's going to be the big question here. I'm not sure what that signal was, though. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know exactly. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with the full call right after this on All Red. <laughs> 